Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will mount and test this Thermalrite AXP90-X53 Classic Low Profile CPU Cooler. Around the box, it's basically the same as the old AXP90 except that it is a bit taller at 53mm. It also says that it is compatible with the AMD AM4 but didn't mention the M5. Anyway, opening the box. Upon opening, there's a thin phone padding, a manual, warranty information, a universal backplate that can work with both AMD and Intel, another thin foam padding, an accessories package. The accessories package contains short screws and nuts, thermal paste, there's no indication of how much but likely good for 1 to 2 applications only, AMD brackets, LGA 1200 brackets, long screws, I'm not sure if the long ones are still needed but for AM4 installation, we only need the shorter screws, and a nut tool. And this is the cooler itself, this is the blacked out version, and by default it has the LGA1700 brackets installed. Anyway, as for testing, I'll be testing on the usual B550i Aorus Pro AX, pre-installed processor is the Ryzen 7 5800X, RAM is a Kingston Fury non-RGB 32GB 3200MHz CL16 RAM. First step is to peel the plastic, as I'll be installing this to an AM4 socket, remove the default LGA1700 brackets first. Install the AM4 brackets underneath the cold plate, screw the shorter screws to the bracket, and set this aside for now. Apply thermal paste to the CPU, 9 dots and not 9 dashes. Place the cooler on top of the CPU. Together with the cooler and motherboard, do an acrobatic flip. Put the AM4 backplate. At this point, it was a bit of a struggle to insert all four screws at the same time to the backplate. The technique that I used here is to hold the backplate on top and bottom and push it to the motherboard simultaneously. It wasn't the best feeling but it did the job. Ensure to hold it down while placing the nuts. And then use the nut tool to tighten. It is still best to tighten the nuts 3 turns at a time. Lastly, plug the fan to the fan header and now it's time to test this. As for testing while benchmarking Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes, it was expected at 90 degrees Celsius on average. While testing FF15 in 4K for 30 minutes, the CPU temps averaged at 70.38 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 83.6 degrees Celsius. This is 2.3 degrees Celsius cooler than the Sight Shuriken 3 Rev B and 1.5 degrees Celsius hotter than the AXP120-X67. While testing FF15 in 1080p for 30 minutes, the CPU temps averaged at 78.03 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 87.6 degrees Celsius. This is 1.7 degrees Celsius cooler than the Sight Shuriken 3 Ref B and 2.5 degrees Celsius hotter than the AXP120-X67. As for overall recommendation, well for low profile coolers in general, cooling wise those can't handle extreme CPU load from a 105 watt CPU. However, AXP90-X53 can handle gaming loads. Second item for low profile coolers in general, height and compatibility matters a lot. If your case only has a 50 53mm CPU cooler limit, then this is a good choice as it doesn't interfere with the motherboard heatsinks and RAM. Specific to AXP90-X53, I like that they have decided to use the AM4 backplate which will make it compatible with AM5. Pricing wise, this is around 1,700 Philippine pesos or around 30 US dollars, which for me is not bad. As for the noise, I can hear the humming sound 30 centimeters away from the cooler but do note that the AC was running during load testing, so take this noise comment with a grain of salt. Lastly, I just want to point out that I know the limitations of my CPU cooler testing. I haven't even tested any CPUs at the moment as those are really costly and this channel is funded by my salary. So until such a time that I can gain traction, please bear with me. Anyway, I guess that's it for this video. Do let me know what you think of this cooler. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike. And subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmarks. Bye!